The Basic Metabolic Panel, or BMP, also known as a CHEM7 or simply as an electrolyte panel, includes a set of seven laboratory values widely monitored in patients. Rather than simply putting these seven numbers into a table, these lab values are often presented in the form of a fishbone diagram. It can be hard to remember which labs are included and where each lab value goes without a lot of practice. So in this video, I'll give you my visual mnemonic to help you remember this lab diagram in one fell swoop. Welcome, welcome to our humble restaurant. I'll get you seated right after I take this fishbone back to the kitchen. Whoa, and here we are frozen in the moment in which my career as a waiter all went wrong. I just had a massive slip, as evidenced by this fishbone flying through the air. By the way, a fishbone helps me remember the fishbone shape of the Chem7 or metabolite panel. Yeah, here it is overlaid for context. We'll talk more about which labs go where later, but for now, just picture this fishbone to help you structure the basic metabolic panel. Next, you know how everything tastes better with more salt? Well, just take a look at this salt shaker flying from the plate. Yeah, I always bring an extra salt shaker to go with the food. I swear it gives me better tips. Anyways, this salt shaker should help you remember sodium, since salt has a lot of sodium, right? Anyways, this salt shaker also went flying upwards in my big slip. In other words, sodium occupies the top left position in this fishbone. Sodium levels are extremely important for a variety of reasons, but they function primarily as a measure of water balance in the body. Simply put, sodium levels are high when water levels are low, since a lack of water makes the plasma more concentrated. And the same is true vice versa. I won't get into the nitty gritty of what every lab value means here. Just peg this salt shaker to remember where sodium is located in this fishbone diagram. Let's move on. Now let's talk about why I slipped here in the first place. Well, look down at this banana peel I just slipped on. Oh man, looks like someone wasn't being careful and left a banana peel on the ground. Who does that? By the way, bananas make me think of potassium because bananas are high in potassium, get it? And potassium occupies the bottom left position of this fishbone diagram. I mean, it's got to be below sodium because I slipped on this banana peel on the floor and potassium's on the left side, well because I'm coming in from the left side, remember? Potassium is extremely important to monitor, as small changes in potassium can have a big impact on heart and muscle function. Generally speaking, potassium levels change whenever the kidneys aren't working, or as a result of taking certain drugs, such as the diuretics used to treat high blood pressure. Just picture me slipping on this banana peel here to remember where potassium goes in this diagram. Next, let's talk about where I was taking this plate. Yep, to the kitchen sinks. Where else would you take a plate? Anyways, looks like someone was cleaning the kitchen sink earlier, since you can still see this bottle of Clorox they left here. Clorox really is the best thing for cleaning sinks. Coincidentally, this Clorox should help you remember, yep, chloride, the next ion in the metabolic panel. Clorox for chloride, get it? And you guessed it, chloride occupies the next position in this table. It's on top of the sink, which should help you remember that it's the lab value on top. Chloride's role in this panel is pretty nuanced, but generally speaking, chloride levels are used to monitor acid-base changes in the blood. Afterwards, shift your gaze down towards this baking soda. Remember how I slipped earlier? Well, it seems like someone spilled trash all over this tile floor, and now they're using baking soda to clean it all up. I wish they had taken care of that peel from earlier though. Anyways, this baking soda should help you remember bicarbonate. Since baking soda has a ton of bicarbonate, get it? And you guessed it, this baking soda is on the floor to help you remember that bicarbonate levels are found below chloride. Yep, while the chloride chlorix was used for the sink above, this bicarb baking soda is used to clean the floors below. Seriously, it works great on tile floors. You should try it out sometime. We generally measure bicarbonate as a surrogate for carbon dioxide levels in the blood. This is also very helpful for the determination of acid-base status. Just remember this baking soda to peg bicarbonate in the fishbone, alright? Next, take a look at the back wall of this kitchen, where we keep the extra buns. Yep, these are buns. Everyone likes a freshly baked bun with their dinner, right? The word bun should help you remember B-U-N, otherwise known as blood urea nitrogen. Buns for B-U-N, get it? BUN is on the top here for reasons we'll touch on in just a moment. 
For now, just remember that BUN occupies the next position on the right here. Now let's look below the buns at the containers they're being stored in. Yep, these are crates. You see, when you order enough buns, you get them delivered by the crate load. These crates also help me remember creatinine, since crate sounds a lot like creatinine. Get it? And these crates are obviously below BUN, since the BUN buns are piled up above these crates. BUN and creatinine go well together, since they are both waste products used to determine kidney function. In the fishbone diagram, BUN is located above creatinine, which you can just remember as our buns piling up on top of these crates. Last but not least, take a look at these bags of sugar in the back pantry. Of course we keep the extra sugar in the pantry, don't you? And you've probably already guessed it, the sugar is our recurring symbol for glucose. And this makes sense here, since we're really just talking about measuring blood sugar levels. This sugar is located all the way on the right, since the pantry is in the back of the kitchen, right? Glucose levels are measured for obvious reasons, especially in diabetic patients. Just remember these sugar sacks in the far end here to peg glucose's place in the far right of this fishbone diagram. And there we have it, the complete fishbone diagram. That wasn't so bad, right? Let's do a quick recap and get out of here so I can stop reliving my worst moment as a waiter. The BNP, or CHEM7, is a panel of laboratory values commonly measured in patients. These values are usually presented in a fishbone diagram, with placements as follows. Sodium is placed on the top left, with potassium below. Immediately right comes chloride on top, with bicarbonate below. Further right is BUN, with creatinine below that. And on the far right, we finish with glucose. And that's it for our BNP fishbone mnemonic. In time, you'll get so familiar with this diagram that all this will seem like second nature. But in the meantime, I hope this mnemonic was helpful. If you'd like to see more of these types of videos, let us know. Alright, let me clean up this mess and get you seated to dine. You've been waiting all this time, remember? Hey you, busboy. Give me a table stat. We got an important guest from Pixar Eyes here. I'll catch you on the other side. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.